I love Juicy Juice's stuff, yeah. especially the like more subversive stuff where it's about aliens or murder. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it speaks to me. Yep. <laughs> Let's not have that be the promotional uh, soundbite. <laughs> Murder it speaks to me. <laughs> You're listening to Fussy Cutters Club podcast, a show that gives you permission to cut into the good fabric so you can make quilts you love. And now your host, who believes it's not a crime to love using novelty fabrics, and Wilson. On today's episode of the Fussy Cutters podcast, we're joined with Bobby from The Geeky Bobbin. If you don't know Bobby, I first fell in love with Bobby's work way back when, when we first started 100 Days, 100 Blocks. Bobby did one of the first iconic fussy cut, seamless pattern matching versions of Chula Pink City Sampler. And she has just gone on from strength to strength from then. She's taught at QuiltCon. She has an online class called Fussy Cut Like a Rocket Surgeon. She's also now offering a block of the month for 2024 called Fussy Fuel. I'm really excited to talk to Bobby today. Welcome, Bobby. Thank you, Angie. So good to see you. <laughs> you too. Because we have, we were, we sort of touched on it briefly before we started, but we have kind of known of each other or been in the same yeah. fussy cutting circles for like years. We've been Instagram acquainted at yes. least for ages. Yeah. Your um, 100 Days, 100 Blocks was one of the first quilt alongs that I joined. So uh, it features quite highly when I do my trunk show and talk about my journey. And so, uh, yeah, we've never, I feel like we've met. I yes. feel like we've met because I've, you know, seen your videos and seen your stories and stuff yep. on Instagram. And I'm sure likewise. Yep. Um, so I'm so honored to be welcomed into your virtual home. I know. And I'm really excited because when we struck on the idea to have just a Fussy Cutters podcast, it meant I got to go back and have a look through everybody's <laughs> fussy cutting. And I really don't enjoy social media at the moment because of the way that, like, I feel like all I see is ads and I don't see the people I actually like. And blah, blah, blah. and so this gave me an intentional job with social media. And it was so nice. I lost hours just looking at people's fussy cutting and blocks and the things that they were doing and finished quilts. And so it was my pleasure and I'm really excited to have you here. Can you tell us a Wonderful. little bit about how you got started as a quilter and then why you fell in love with fussy cutting as a technique? Amazing. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I feel like this is the perfect time. I just have to say I did a epic fussy cutting trunk show um, like a month or two ago. And so like I totally curated this exact story already. <laughs> so yes, I, I have the story perfectly on the tip of my tongue. Here we go. Um, my very first quilt, I was making it as a baby blanket for a friend. It was, you know, during that time of yep. life when friends start having babies. And I had made a crochet blanket for this friend's first baby and then for the second baby. It was it was all very nerdy and video game related. It was uh, the first one was related to the video game called Portal, but it was like a stealth nerd thing. So yeah. it, it anyway, that's the crochet thing. Um, stealth nerd. Second one, I was making a Tetris blanket for her. And I thought, well, I'm tired of making granny squares, so maybe I <laughs> can I do this as a quilt? Like, I've been sewing since I was a little kid. So, you know, I asked some, I, I'm part of a group on Facebook that is a bunch of moms who also are very crafty. And um, we're like, it's an offshoot from a larger mom group. And I, there were a couple of people there who had shared their quilts and were professionals in the quilting world. And I had never attempted a quilt before, but I started to be interested because I saw some really cool modern quilts uh, by some of the members of this group. So I asked this group, will I want to throw my sewing machine out the window if I try this? I, you know, shared yep. a mock-up and they were <laughs> like, here are all the resources that you could possibly ever need. Also, Starch is your friend. <laughs> so they, like, they hooked me up with, like, Quilty and everything else. And it's basically, like, I watched every tutorial in the world and read every blog post before I ever touched fabric. And I was like, 
I am Keanu. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> so I have just like absorbed all of the knowledge of the quilt averse before I ever touched fabric. And I was like, okay, this is great. My first quilt did not start off with any fussy cutting. So if folks take a look at the picture, I don't know if we're going to share yeah, pictures will, uh, for folks. Okay, so I'll share a picture that illustrates how I started off with not fussy cutting at all. And like the pink blocks in particular have these mermaids that are all decapitated <laughs> and de finitated <laughs> and like clearly it did not occur to me that fussy cutting was necessary and I you know I don't regret it it worked okay for that block but man it, I could have done better and then by the time I got to the background strips of this quilt the width of the strip that I needed was almost exactly the width of this unicorn and I like I the way that the print was stacked, it was like there's unicorn, 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 right stacked on top of each other. And I did not want to have a strip of unicorn butts because if I hadn't moved, like if I hadn't cut specifically, then I would have had unicorn butts. So I was like, okay, well, I, that is not acceptable. That's not a good use of this fabric. So I nudged it over so that I could have a strip of the unicorn talking to the princess. And I was like, oh, okay. So I think that was the first time that I fussy cut on my first quilt, but not on the first block. So I, I gradually understood that I needed to do a little <laughs> bit of curating of where I'm going to cut. And then shortly thereafter, I decided that this was not the right quilt for this baby because I didn't even know if this friend, as geeky as she was, I didn't know if Tetris was her thing. I ended up making a separate quilt for this baby um, that was all about Dungeons and Dragons, also very nerdy. Yep. And almost all of the blocks in this one were fussy cut in some way or another. Before I even knew that fussy cutting was a thing or that it was a term, I was just like, well, clearly this tree needs to be centered. And I want to have these children not be cut in half when they're playing with their kite and that sort of thing. And it was all like, you know, there's dragons. And so I wanted to have as many whole dragons within the hexagon as I could, that sort of thing. So um, it ended up being all fussy cut. And before I finished that one, I had the quilt top done and I was like, okay, well now I know that I need to practice the quilting and the binding. And so I'm going to make a small project so that I can learn those skills and practice them on actual patchwork before I go into this giant epic fussy cut quilt that I've, you know, hand embroidered and <laughs> all this like, crazy stuff. Um, so I made a cushion cover and it ended up being made mostly from scraps. And I had picked up a scrap bag from someone in like our local buy nothing group. And it had, oh my gosh, it had like out of print stuff. It had some really cool prints that I've never seen ever again. It, I later on discovered that it had some tulip pink nightshade, wow. which was already rare by that yeah. point. <laughs> Um, so I didn't end up using the nightshade in this, in this particular cushion cover, but I, um, I made these tiny little blocks. They're like the simplest courthouse steps. Oh yeah. The simplest ever courthouse steps, like where there's like a square in the middle and then one layer around it, but they were fussy cut. So or most of them were fussy cut. So again, I didn't know that this was a thing. I went into my local quilt shop to get some thread that was a good color to quilt this and the owner of the quilt shop said, oh, that's some nice fussy cutting. And I was like, okay, I'll have to look that word up. Um, but yeah, it was nice fussy cutting. And so that kind of just became my thing. And then, yep. you know, when I went into a quilt shop or to a quilt show and did my fabric shopping, I was constantly being asked at the checkout, oh, are you making a nice spy quilt? And I was oh, like, yeah. no, this is just the fabrics that I buy. I, yeah. Novelty, what do you mean? Why would anybody buy any other kind of fabric? So that is the beginning of my story. <laughs> and so I love that you went and jacked into the matrix and downloaded everything to do with quilting. Everything. And, yeah. And in that, you didn't come across fussy cutting. So I might have. Or it didn't it's possible. stick out. Maybe. So because it feels like there is just a section of quilters that do fussy cut like it just it's their their thing it's the thing that brings them joy and it's interesting that you were like oh I don't want butts on my quilt <laughs> because yeah. 
at times, I've purposely cut a unicorn's butt to put on the quilt. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yes. I mean, you could be telling someone what you think of them, maybe, but... <laughs> but it's that thing, but yeah, right? It was just like, it's it's just natural, you know? Yeah. Why would I want to cut this fly in half or, you know, have two halves of flies on the sides and nothing, not a fly in the middle if yeah. I have the choice, obviously. So I think if I did come across it, I was just like these words that you're using, this concept that you're saying, I don't understand it because it's so obvious to me. I yeah. Think. And I think it is a real reflection of my husband and I joke about it, that it's it's how I organize the world. And so okay. there's like symmetry and well, sometimes we're, you know, there's deliberate asymmetry, but he's like, that's how you see the world. Everything's neat, square, it fits in. Da, 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 da. And I think it's a really interesting way because some of the best quilts I've seen people just cut with abandon and I am very jealous of that ability to just go in and like cut <laughs> just the necessary squares. And my girlfriend and I often joke that she could make a whole quilt top and I'd still be picking fabrics for the first quilt block because yes. my process is very slow. But it's about what brings you joy in that process. So. Yes. Yeah, it is about, it's about what brings you joy. It's also about what the fabric wants you to do with it. Yes. Yeah, but then, like, I remember early on in my course, because I'm like you, I'm a little bit self-taught. I did do a beginner's course, but she didn't cover fussy cutting. And I have seen, like, and it's the thing that I love about 100 Days, is you see the same fabric, right, and it speaks differently to each person who touches that fabric. And so totally. some fabrics that I've like gone, oh, don't know how I'd use that. I see someone else use it and I'm like, oh, that's genius. They saw that yes. in it. And, and so it's one of the things that I love about quilting is that we're given, it's a little bit like baking. We're all given the same ingredients, but what people choose to do with them and what their end product is, is completely like magic, like you don't know what's mm -hmm. kind of coming. So I guess we got to the point where you're like, I identify as a fussy cutter. Yes. And so how did you see that? Did that then influence the projects you took on? Like have you, because you oh, said originally totally. you were drawn to modern, modern quilting, but now we see you using a lot of traditional blocks. Your block of the month is a traditional block inspired block of the month and we will have links and photos to all of this stuff so people can check it out but do you find that there is a clear distinction or are you a little bit of everything I would say even my even when I use traditional blocks I feel like they're still very modern in terms of the fabrics that I choose and especially the colors one yeah. of my favorite hashtags is bright colors make me happy so I I don't think anyone would ever really mistake any of my quilts as being traditional. As a quilt pattern designer, I have uh, leaned a little bit more towards traditional than my instincts go, maybe, for blocks, um, block-based quilts, so that they can sell more. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I getcha. But even still, like, I... I'm easily bored. So, you know, Me too. I, I don't like to make quilts that are blocks that that people have seen before. So if it's if it's something that I'm creating this new pattern, I want it to be a new pattern. And yeah. there are so many other folks who can make star quilts. And, you know, I don't know if there are traditional star quilt blocks or if they're brand new star quilt blocks. Yeah. All stars kind of look the same to me. I don't know. <laughs> um, yep. And, you know, I've, I've never made a, a quilt that's just squares. It, it just doesn't work for my aesthetic. So yep. I would say that the blocks that I'm using for my block of the month are way more traditional and basic, but the intention is not to make them with your everyday fabrics. Because yeah, because you're teaching a skill set. Yeah, exactly. So I used to teach um, fussy cutting um, I call it fussy cutting like a rocket surgeon. And I used to teach it with just a couple of blocks and folks would, you know, they would do the exercise of the pattern matching or whatever it is that I'm teaching them. And then they'd say, okay, now what do you do with this? And so they were looking for what is the purpose of this skill that you just taught me? And for me, it's always been the other way around. It's more like, oh, okay, well, this block on its own is kind of boring. What can I do to make it really cool? Yeah. So I kind of had to think, oh, okay, well, how can I connect those dots for people? And um, 
the block of the month that kind of came from that idea from like my students in in in-person workshops this summer saying, okay, so now what do you do with these blocks? I figured if I give them a project that is going to be a finished quilt, then they will see that, oh, well, this is just a tool that you can use to turn or a, a series of tools really that you can use to turn an ordinary quilt block, any quilt block, if you want to make it super special yep. to how you can use um, the your favorite prints in your stash to make them awesome. <laughs> so I guess you, like me, it's why I like samplers because I'd get bored. I've made a few one block quilts in my life and Actually, probably the Swoon Quilt by Camille Ros Kelly, because when I started quilting, that was really big. I've made three versions of that. But it's really funny because my first version is very much uh, just cut the fabric, put it together. And by my third version, I'm doing secondary patterns with cutting the same motif. And and so I'm like, it was like the progression. <laughs> and so that that ability to, I guess, see those blocks and how they can come together in a whole quilt is another skill. So let's talk about your bomb as an example, right? And okay. um, and like we said before, your bomb is designed to teach people who've not fussy cut before or dabbled a little bit with it foundational skills to get them to the end goal of being a master fussy cutter. Um, and so it is probably a little bit more reflective of that starting position in your fussy cut journey, which is great and I love a good traditional base quilt block so when you start a project do you look at it and go all right this is the story I'm going to tell this is the color palette I'm going to use like how do you make sure that that whole quilt top is coherent both of those okay so if I've got a pattern Usually, if I'm if I'm making something, I've already got a pattern in mind. So, uh, thinking back to that um, Dungeons and Dragons quilt that I made, yep. uh, I found a pattern that I liked, and I reverse engineered it before I knew that that was you know not so cool. Um, so, I found a pattern that I liked, and it was just hexagons and triangles. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to uh, use that pattern. I calculated how big it would be, et cetera, et cetera, and it was both to tell a story because it's Dungeons and Dragons. There has to be an epic story. Uh, but also I tried to keep the color scheme cohesive. So it had greens and oranges and a bit of like a dusty teal, yeah. I'd say, um, with, you know, hits of other colors as well. But it just kind of naturally evolved as I was picking things that would work for this story that I was telling. Uh, I was picking fabrics that that I found that would work. The color story evolved. So that that's how that one came together. As a professional in the quilting world, I would say usually it starts with the fabrics. Although for the block of the month, I actually, I first mocked it up with Tula Pink's Besties, I think. And then... I mocked it up with Ruby Star Society, Rise and Shine. So I mocked it up with more than one collection. I feel like, especially if, you, if you're designing something for fussy cutting, it can be tricky because you have to make something that will work with basically any fabric collection that is fussy cut friendly. Yep. So it's got to, it's like, you know, I designed it for one collection and then I have to prove that it works with something else as well. Yep. So I tried to mock it up with multiple fabric collections and it doesn't have to be a, a single collection necessarily, but you know, I, yep. I figured I would cross promote with uh, a fabric designer. And so, yep. um, so that's, that's usually what drives the, fabric choices for quilts that I end up making these days is, you know, what, what fabric is coming out soon and can get yep. some real interest. So when you, you were talking about how do I make this work uh, for multiple collections, do you have a strategy for fussy cutting? So like I personally like pick a hero print and then I try to balance it with complementary either tone on tone or solids or, you know, ditzy prints that allow that that main hero print to kind of do its thing. Do you approach it that way or do you kind of go every square is an opportunity for me to fussy cut? Like it's... Right. Yes. Well, I mean, in this case, 
every square is an opportunity for me to fussy cut because that's what it's all about. Even the sashing and cornerstones, it's like, well, this is an opportunity to fussy cut. And a one inch sashing might not work for every collection. So I'm going to give you options for different sizes of sashing. So because this one is fussy cut focused, I, I wanted that to, to be the case. When I did the 100 Days 100 Blocks in 2018, I fussy cut most of them, but sometimes I just didn't have the time or there wasn't, I, there was a specific print that I wanted to use, or I had just like a tiny little scrap of it. And so I fussy cut ish, or I didn't fussy cut at all because it didn't make sense. Cause it was more of like a blender. Yeah. So for that one, I, I, I'd say I probably fussy cut like 60% of my blocks at least. Yeah. Yeah. So when you um, talk about, what is fussy cutting for you? So when you say I I fussy cut 60% of my blocks, that's cutting all of the fabric in that block with intention or is it a specific style of fussy cutting? Because you're very well known for the seamless pattern matching fussy cutting, which we'll cover off in a little bit. But is that when you think of what fussy cutting is, what do you kind of Associate. Yeah, cutting with, in, cutting with intention. I would say like the very most basic definition of fussy cutting. So I've, I'll back up. I've personally broken down um, fussy cutting into four fussy fundamentals, which are the kind of like more atomic uh, skills that you need in order to make those epic fussy cuts. And so the most basic one is isolation. So at its simplest, you know, just cutting the horse's backside if that's what you're focusing on or you know cut that butterfly so that you have the butterfly and not half of its wing isolating that within your block within your patch that's the most essential form of fussy cutting I would say and then like building from there there's I mean, within isolation, you can isolate. It doesn't necessarily have to be centered in the middle of the block. Um, I'm just laughing because I can see my hand motions. <laughs> and they're completely wasted because no one else is going to see them. <laughs> no, um, but, but we, will, we will show them examples of like, because there's fussy cutting to center the motif. Then there's fussy cutting a motif for thirds. Then there's fussy cutting a motif for doing the trick where your brain, you cut it in such a way that the brain fills in the rest of it mm -hmm. um that you give them just enough so they know that's like a carrot or something so i'll tell you one of my favorite examples that doesn't fall into any of those categories which yep. is um way back even uh, so the very first quilt along that i did was tartan kiwi she did uh, the woodlands two quilt along so she had these four blocks that were in a bundle and they're animals. Her, that's her thing. She does yep. animals. So Ju FPP. that's Juliet in um, in New Zealand. She does foundation paper paste patterns. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I saw the mock up of her otters or the deer or something. One of them, and the eyes were just done with a black solid. And I was like, those eyes look dead. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. <laughs> so when I did mine, I chose a black print that had, like, it was mostly black with little white stars in it. And I, like, tried to fussy cut it so that the stars were, like, where the, the eyes would twinkle. Yeah. No, like, just, just the oh, yeah. shine. Because, like, you know, animals have dark, like, the whole eye is dark. Yeah. And that's totally fine. But I wanted it to be, like, ding! <laughs> My eyes are not dead. <laughs> I'm alive! I'm alive! <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did the same thing for the nostrils on the otters. I put the the stars where the nostrils would be. So I was yeah. just like, you know, it's it's intentional, but it's not centering and it's not putting it on the rule of thirds. It's like this is exactly where I want it to yeah, give yeah. some kind of effect. So your yeah. your um, I like to think of that as animating a quilt block because I do. Um, I'm not a very big fan of foundation paper piecing, which just drives Christy from Quiet Play uh, bonkers because she is very much into that. But And I appreciate it. I just I can't, I mentally just can't wrap my head around it. But I do a lot of the, um, oh, I do a lot. When I sew so personally, John from Art East Quilting Company does yes. these pictorial-based patchwork quilt blocks. And so um, I've just been working on his Alice in Wonderland-themed one, which is amazing. And I do the same. So he's got uh, 
eyeballs that are rectangles, vertical rectangles um, or portrait scape rectangles. And so I cut Chula's dot, her circus dot, so that it looked like the an- anime eye so that the round was at the bottom and then the up, the full colour was at the top so it looked like an eyeball. Because <laughs> nice. I was just I like, love it. So in my head I'm like, well, that's motif used for animation so that you like animating as in bringing it to life, not animating as yeah. in the style. But so there is, and then the other one I like is fussy cutting for colour. So sometimes, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. find like K-Facet, Anna Maria Horner fabrics, those big florals, sometimes you can't get the big floral into like a two-inch block patch. So um, cutting to extract the colour from certain yes. prints to complement other things. Um, but essentially I don't think personally I've seen all there is to see with techniques for um, fussy cutting. So you said you've got four. So the first one is motif-based, um, positional? No. What did you say it was? Isolation. Isolation. Yep. Isolation. The second one is repetition. So, yep. th- I mean, that kind of says it all, right? So yep. using the same – the, there's a sub thing of repetition, which is mirroring. So this is something that you see a lot in English paper pieced patterns, yep. especially like the Millefiori, where, you know, you've got the same piece that's mirrored repeatedly. And so I uh, – I teach folks how and why and when to do that. Pattern matching, as you've mentioned, I'm sure no one is surprised. That's (laughs) one of my favorites. Um, So doing the epic pattern matching is so much fun. And then the last one is slice and insert, which is kind of, uh, I know, I know. It's it's kind of a subset of pattern matching. It can be a subset of pattern matching, yep. but not always. Okay. Um, so thinking back to the Tula 100 Days, 100 Blocks, I used that technique on the tiger that yep. I did with one of the crosses. And I also did it with the, um, the Lyra bird. Yep. Um, it, any, basically, it's anything with a half inch finished strip. Because the way the quilt math, the way the quilt math works, and I have so much trouble articulating this, <laughs> but the way the quilt math works, the seam allowances cancel each other out, so you can cut something and reinsert a one inch strip such that you haven't disturbed the first two. But I've got a very specialized way of doing that so yep. that things don't get shifted. So before anyone freaks out, because this is a podcast and we're listening, not looking, um, we will have examples of all of these things for people to go and check out. That's really interesting because, oh, I'm going to take your class because I'm just kind of like (laughs) the insertion one, I think by default, I may have done it without realizing that the math, see, I'm really crap at math. And so... um, (laughs) which is ironic because my husband has a degree in mathematics and it drives him bonkers. But I can work, <laughs> we can work out if something is on sale exactly how much it's going to cost me at the checkout in like milliseconds. <laughs> but if I have to do math for a quilt block, I'm like, eh. Um, oh, no, really? Yeah, like it's oh, shocking. Wow. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I didn't realise that it was the seam allowance. The seam allowance is what's the cancel like the the absorption they cancel each other the, out yeah 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 but and yeah. it would only work for a half inch strip because you're or you uh yeah I'll we'll talk yes. about this later yes <laughs> I see the I see the math gears turning you can do it for different sizes but then you actually have to do math because yeah. there's like this this magic thing about the one inch strip <laughs> yeah can you smell that burning all the way from Australia to I Canada can. that's my yes <laughs> that's my brain going do math um. So let's circle back to the pattern matching, seamless pattern matching. Yes. Because that is, as you said, that's probably what I want to say catapulted you, but that implies that you weren't working hard behind the scenes. Oh, no, it it catapulted me to, like, fame and not fortune. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I feel you. So... For those that aren't aware, you, there is a technique in fussy cutting where you take the same print in two different colorways. So say uh, a, a print that comes in blue and then a print that comes in reds or oranges and you match the motif and the background. And so it looks like you seamlessly go from one colorway to the other. And I love that name for it because it's a great pun 
because there is a seam in it, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you seamlessly yeah, go from seamless. one one print to the next print, um, mm-hmm. and you have this technique. So I do it. I can do it with two, two like one seam. Mm-hmm. I don't ever try and do it with more than that because again, uh, burns the old brain you. But you can. <laughs> I think what's the most you've done transition wise. Oh my gosh, so many. Like uh, there's there's one block in particular that is like there, well there's more than one block that is a log cabin and so there's like all of these transitions going from one to the next and they're all pattern matched all the way through. So yeah, the technique, the way that I the way that I defined this technique, um it can work in infinite ways, but it the, the cutting part is sometimes tricky and you do have a course where you teach I do I have I have a course um I'm so I have generally called this course uh fussy cut like a rocket surgeon I have a live where I did one of the blocks from that um 100 days 100 blocks I did it live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time back before there was all the technology that would allow you to do that I had an iPad and a phone (laughs) both both streaming at the same time (laughs) (laughs) my setup was really hilarious for that um I think I taped things to the chandelier so that they would be over my work surface anyway um so so yeah so I I teach this course fussy cut like a rocket surgeon and that's where I teach these techniques and I taught that at a couple of shows this summer and I was also um already contracted to teach it at QuiltCon coming up this February and my when when the doors opened for QuiltCon, my all of my workshops, not just the fussy cutting ones, sold out in less than an hour, which kind of happens for a lot of stuff with QuiltCon. That's amazing. That's it, great. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciated that uh, ego boost because <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, you know, I feel like people are going to take these classes, but maybe I'm going to have to remind people a few times. And I feel like maybe, you know, I'm going to digress a little. I feel like maybe there was a few instructors who posted a lot on Instagram and to their email lists saying, hey, stuff tends to sell out. So set five reminders. And I was one of those people. I was like, set five reminders so that you don't miss your things. And so a lot of stuff sold out really, really quickly. There's way more demand than there is supply of us teachers for those particular workshops. But they can be taught in other times and locations. However, it's kind of challenging to squeeze this information into three hours and also convey the strategy of looking at the fabric prints in you know through my fussy cutting goggles uh to know what's going to make for a successful block and what's not so this um block of the month it's not just a bomb like it's not just here's the pattern now go at it yeah it's a workshop supported block of the month. And it's really focusing on the strategy behind choosing the right fabrics to make a successful block. So I'm kind of dictating that as well and talking through my selection process That's as a, I go through the fabrics. It's a question that we get, or I'm assuming you're the same as me, we get a lot about how do you choose fabrics and people seem to go, oh, how do you walk into a fabric store and just go, I will get that random piece of fabric (laughs) and I'm going to use it over here. And so I do the same. We talk a lot about, you know, what do you see? And I think for me personally, it's just become a learned, like you said, lens that you see things through. Mm -hmm. And what I bought initially to what I buy now are two very, they're on the same spectrum, but they're very, they've gone from sort of, naive kind of novelty prints to I can see some and see different things in patterns that I would have gone previously oh that's that's not a fussy cut fabric that's not I can't use right that. yeah and yeah so, I've got a particular one that comes to mind when you talk about that I'm trying to remember what it was but I think it was from either chipper or somewhere around there from a tulip pink it's yep. the one with the circles and then there's like lines radiating out from it oh yeah like this one um 
that one, that one. I was like, <laughs> who would use that print? I was like, this is, this is I not for me. And I didn't buy any of it. And then I saw people doing amazing things with fussy cutting that. And I was like, ah, oh, give me <laughs> all of the de-stashes. I must have it. <laughs> so do you, I like to go on a fabric hunt. So um, people talk about going like antiquing or collecting Pokemon cards or whatever. And I'm like, I treat my fabric like that. And so when we travel, I will go and have a look at quilt stores to see what they've got on the shelves. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, stashes, yeah. eBay, Facebook Marketplace. Do you have a fabric that you were like, I'm um, two questions. Do you have a fabric that you got that you were like, I will never get any of this. And then you did get like your favorite find. And two, do you have a fabric that's still on the loose that you would like some? more of or to get for the first time? I am officially at the point in my stash building journey where I do not need to own any more fabric. I'm editing that bit out. No, you don't need. (laughs) I said want. Do you want? (laughs) No, like I've been actually, I've been very good about not bringing any more fabric into my home for like a couple of years now. (laughs) Like seriously, there is no space. There's no space for it. I do not have room. The only stuff that I've actually been buying lately, and you know, this is the part that you're going to edit out, is I've been buying bolts of solids. Yeah, no, can you see I have bolts of solids because you need Yeah, that's the only fabric I've been getting is yeah. bolts of solids and I'm getting them at wholesale because that's what I need for backgrounds and stuff and like a lot of the quilts I've been making lately have just been with solids. Yeah. You know, I I I'm, maybe I've matured a bit with my tastes as a quilter <laughs> or something. No, I think sometimes like, it's a palette refresher. I call that my sorbet project. So in between yes. big projects, I do a sorbet project, which is like my palette cleanser so that I can refocus on doing the next big thing because I think Mm -hmm. I approach it like it's a skill set and like an I like to think of myself as an athlete and so it's that thing where you have to condition your skills your tool your craft and so if you don't have that downtime and that free play time then you'll burn out um totally in in the main area so um the Sorbet project is a good one. But yes. is there, like, was there a print that you absolutely wanted and it eluded you or? There was. There was. However, before I quit my day job, I kind of went a little bit overboard on the D stashes and I bought all the out of print Tula. Oh. <laughs> so I like to, I like to say that like there's, there's the nightshade deja vu. I have not yep. acquired any of that. I might want to get some of that. Some of it is really, really pretty, yep. but um, my nightshade stash is like my kid's college fund. because <laughs> It appreciates faster than anything other than real estate in Toronto. <laughs> That's funny. Cause I, so I'm the same. I wish I could show you. I have two really big tubs of Chula from all the way back from Birds and the Bees and when she was with Moda to stuff now. And I am, no, I'm going to own my idiocy. Um, I bought Deja Vu Nightshade and I never list, I I bought it for the shop and I never listed it. Because I was like, I, I don't know. tell my accountant, but everything I buy is for the shop. Oh, no. My CFO, as I affectionately call her, is actually my mother. And so we have had very intense discussions about what is for the shop and what is for me. And so I completely get it and I completely understand. So that, I guess, answers one of the questions I had was, is there a designer that you love above all else or is there a designer you're drawn to like or do you go oh no I use everything and anything but yeah I so I really these days I really love a lot of the stuff that's coming out from Ruby Star Society yeah um Melody Miller and Sarah Watts and Rashida Colvin Hale like their stuff just really speaks to me yeah so I love 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 what they are putting out I love Juicy Juices stuff, yeah. especially the like more subversive stuff where it's about aliens or murder. I don't know. It's just, it speaks to me. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not have that be the promotional uh, soundbite. Murder, it speaks to me. 
<laughs> better than dead but, people you know, speaking like to you. <laughs> Oh, no, there are no dead people speaking to me. There's hardly anybody speaking to me other than the audiobooks that are going into my head 24-7. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, like, I, I just really like his take on stuff. It's yep. like, it's it, it speaks to my inner nerd. Yep. And so I really love using his prints as well. Actually, the first pattern that I wrote that had fussy cutting in mind was my vortex pattern. And it wasn't e like it was like basic fussy cutting. It was like, oh, you know what? I miss fussy cutting. None of my patterns are really fussy cutting focused. So let's make one patch in this fun block that is intended to be big enough for you to fussy cut something fun. And it was uh, I ended up making the cover quilt from his fabrics. And I made the second one using Libs Elliott's. And I really like, there's one print in particular that I love to fussy cut, which is Flash from her very first collection. Is that the one with the tattoo type motifs over it? Yes. Yeah, yeah the too. tattoo scissors yeah. and the, all of that. Like, that is the print that, like, you know what? If I found a bolt of it, I would probably oh, buy it. Oh, me too. I would have to, it would be like one of those, you know, when you see in the movies or whatever, where they go in and it's like a warehouse sale and all the women are fighting over stuff and that would be yeah. me. I would be hunting for that bolt because I did not get enough of that when it came out and mine is like cherished Swiss cheese. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It is Swiss cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's totally Swiss cheese. And, I, I mean, it's been re-released in some variations as part yeah, of it's not Almost same. Blue. But it's not the same. But I love that I love that one. So yeah. um, that's another great one for fussy cutting. And that's the one that I used for the otter pillow with the eyes and, like, yeah. all of the stuff around it was um, it was the motifs that are, I fussy cut for the backgrounds just yeah. because. <laughs> so is there, I guess, a... Fussy cut Everest you're yet to climb? Is there something that you kind of go, oh, I, you know, I'd love to, like, is it like a Millifiori quilt or is it, yeah. do you want to do like? Yeah, I would love to do one of those. Oh. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be, I, I, I know there's like different flavors of Millifiori. Yeah. I, I've, that's kind of on my bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> I used to really love EPP and then we got cats and the cats really loved EPP because they would chase the thread. And so I stopped doing it. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I have to work out a way to inter like integrate it back into my life where the cats don't destroy it while I'm working on it. But I just so like sitting with them. So it's this balance of do I do EPP or sit with the cats? And you'll approve both of our cats, our boy cats, are named after video game characters. So, oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, a family of nerds. I can identify. Yeah. So yeah. I guess let's cover off a couple of things before we finish that you've got coming up. You've got the block of the month, which kicks off in January 2024, uh, which yes. I will include the links to all of these so you, um, people can go and, and see it and sign up. Um, you've got Thank the you. Fussy Cutting Like a Rocket Surgeon, which I love the name of. Is that an evergreen, like a perpetual, people can sign up anytime to take that or do you open the doors to that at specific times? I mean, in the past, I've offered it at shows only. And yep. then, I don't know, in my head, I thought, I thought there was too small of an audience for it. <laughs> Silly me, because no guild had ever hired me to do it, even though yep. it's one of the first offerings I added to my teaching catalog. Because you're anyway, ahead of your time. Clearly, yes, I clearly was ahead of my time. So yep. yeah, um, I offer that when I can. And I've done it uh, as a... Uh, a virtual live workshop as well. I don't feel like it's a good candidate for um, an on-demand workshop because there is a lot of back and forth about the fabrics. Yep. However, Fussy Fuel, the workshop supported block of the month is very much based all on of those... the things that you would miss. Yep. And yeah, so it's it teaches the same techniques, that, but the focus is on how you interpret the fabrics and yep. all of that. So if people... Um, want to catch the fussy cut like a rocket surgeon and have some of that one-on-one -on -one time with you to talk about fabrics they should sign up to your email list right absolutely yes. I mean everybody should sign up to my email <laughs> list regardless <laughs> if for no other reason I mean one they get to hear this wonderful voice in writing <laughs> uh in straight in their inbox no you don't actually get audio of me oh maybe I should maybe I should offer <laughs> no, that don't add another uh, thing to your plate no. <laughs> 
no, I'm not adding another thing to my plate. This is all of my voice that people need to hear. Yeah. And I'm not going to do any audio editing. Thank you for doing it for <laughs> us, Angie. Um, but uh, the other reason that they should join my email list is because then they would get the magical rainbow of binding, which is the fastest way to calculate uh, how much binding you need for any quilt. You just look at it, you find the color, and then it tells you. It tells you how many strips. Oh. Okay. So they get an awesome binding tool when – see, my brain is processing. Ooh, calculations. I literally <laughs> blew your mind. I literally <laughs> blew Angie's mind, everybody. Like, and I haven't even shown her. Okay, I'm going to hold it up to the camera now. So <gasps> – yeah, so you look up you look up the size and you're like, okay, it's this wide and it's this thing, and so that falls into the blue. And like if you care how many inches it says in the middle of the thing, but otherwise you go over here and it says blue, that means you need eight strips if you're doing two inch binding. And so you Yeah, it gives you all the math. You don't have to math. Lots of people keep it by their cutting table, and I totally recommend that you do so. Yeah, lemonade. Plus it it's a rainbow. And put it near your cutting <laughs> table. I'm a big fan of the old lemonation. Yes. So Sign up to the newsletter. Again, links will be with the show notes. And then they Thank can you. see you at QuiltCon. They can't actually take yeah. a class with you because, as we covered, there are no spots left. I think you can go on wait lists, hey, though. For- you can go on wait lists. I'm, I don't know. I have no visibility into how yeah. long the wait list is or anything like that. Um, you know, maybe there's a black market of people trying to buy the most Like a Taylor Swift ticket. Workshops like is Taylor Swift. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I wish, man. Could you imagine if quilting got like Taylor Swift where people were paying thousands of dollars to see a teacher? You know what? We got to get Taylor Swift quilting. Oh. Like I've seen quilts of Taylor Swift, but if we could get Taylor Swift to like say modern quilting is the jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a Swifties onto it. So that's everything. Well, that's everything. That's a big ticket list. That's just the first part of the year for you. And yeah. then, yeah, because yeah, you don't need to be doing anything else in the first part of the year. So that's everything. Is there anything else? Have we not covered anything? I feel like we could, we should do a show where we just have a selection of your blocks and we talk through the process that went behind the blocks. And then people can see the block and we can talk about, you know, what were you thinking when you, not what were you thinking, like, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but like how how did your brain put together these geometric shapes yeah. with these fabrics to make the that thing well so i kind of did that so i don't know if we've already mentioned it but i did i did a fuss, an epic fussy cutting trunk show which was kind of just like here's the gateway to get you to be interested in my uh block of the month program yeah. And I still have that recording. I might offer it like as a, you know, oh, pay five bucks and you can watch it however many times you want. Maybe people should, if you, if you hear this and you are interested in that, <laughs> send me an email. Just reply to one of my newsletters. Yes, I don't Because everyone's going to sign my, up to the yeah. newsletter. So everyone's going to sign up. You can put a question yes, in there to, and go, would you like to see this? Yes or yeah, no? Yep. So far, one person has said yes. Um, <laughs> however, yeah, um, so I did that. I, I was like, oh, well, it's a trunk show. I'm showing you all of these fussy cut things that I've made. And a yep. lot of them were the blocks that I made for that. And it was like, well, this is the techniques that I used. And this is how that came together. The thing is, when you're looking at a finished fussy cut block, you don't see all of the context of like, what did you cut away? Yep. And what like, you know, it, you see the finished product. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. But you don't see that like thought process and like the dissection, the fabric selection dissection. Yeah. I should trademark that. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. And it's a, uh, I filmed for, I, I went in with the intention of doing it for 21 blocks and I ended up only doing it for five, but I filmed the process of how I chose fabrics for the first five blocks of kinship. And mm. it just took forever. Like I didn't realize, yeah. I didn't realize how much time I spend faffing about with fabric. <laughs> um, and so the videos were getting really long and I'm like, this, this is not what I thought it would be. And even when I did it like eight times speed, they're still really long. But it yeah. is that thing of you audition a lot and then yes. what you choose and how you use it. And I, the way my brain works is a lot of times I pick a theme and then 
I cut fabrics that match. So I do a lot of scrappy stuff. I cut fabrics that match that theme. And a lot of people know um, my nautical stuff because I just have such a bent for it's really weird. I don't like being on boats, but I love <laughs> anything to do with sailing, sailors, <laughs> tales of treasure and plunder and but do not put me on a boat. Our oh, cruise ships are different because they're not boats. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's – so I do a theme and then in the block I tell myself a story in the yes. block. And so yes. I don't know how to teach people that process, I guess, except I do – like I guess what I do is I set them up and go, pick a theme, pick the fabrics that match that theme, and then mm-hmm. cut to – tell that story and I guess you did that with the Dungeons and Dragons yeah with the Dungeons and Dragons I did it a lot more with the the 100 days 100 blocks the Tula one because and like what I loved about that is the book the 100 modern blocks it does not name the blocks and so there's like a line for you to name the block and so it's so many times it was like oh either I came up with the name and then like I built the block around this concept or I really enjoyed coming up with a name that would work for it and what you said about like it takes forever to pick your fabrics (laughs) I remember the very first block that I made block number one it took me four hours to make this one six inch block I like I timed myself yeah and it took four hours because I miscut something so many times and whatever and like the number of degrees of uh pattern matching that were involved and uh yeah and they were all super out of print fabrics which meant that like yeah I feel your pain miscutting them was really painful yep. however yeah it took four hours and most of that was not the cutting and sewing it's totally the curating and so yep. that's why some of them I chose not to go crazy with the fussy cutting and the pattern matching because I was like I just don't have the time I just give me some green yep <laughs> and now like at one stage I was like well if I just use a designer because I made an all Chula version and I was like, well, I love Chula. All her fabrics work together. There's fussy cut options in it because we wrote Kinship at an 8 by 8 scale so that we could get big chunks of prints that we loved in these blocks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, that'll be fine. I'll do, like, I'll just do Chula. But then you get lost in the, oh, well, that goes with this and this goes with that. And then, and, and so she's been very prolific. There's a massive, span of fabrics and and so you st- I still found myself losing hours of this is what we're doing yeah. this is what I'm looking for and even stuff like um I picked so I first got addicted to fussy cutting and off the back of Lizzie house and unfortunately Lizzie no longer produces fabric so I have a very uh bookended collection of fabrics mm-hmm. from her and I found after a while the more I fussy cut I went to this place where I just everything had to be fussy cut in there. And so having that very limited palette made it, I was repeating motifs and I was getting bored with that. But now I'm back in the thing where I'm like, if I approach that now, I'd be like, ooh, that's a very defined boundary. How do I elegantly use this fabric end to end where there's a balance between solids and fussy cut and color and fussy cut and and so it's not an I the first one I did where it was just like all scrap fussy cut I'm like it's like Tinkerbell just threw up on a quilt and it's (laughs) (laughs) you know that might be why I never actually like converted that um quilt along into a a finished Finished quilt because I was like I can't yeah yeah They're, they're just blocks People, that's that's my flippant answer when people are like, "When what do you do with the blocks?" I'm like, "This is it. <laughs> that's it. I take them around and I show them to people, and you say wow, and then I show you the back of it, yep. and that's it. Sorry, <laughs> I've seen people from previous hundred day events that have framed their favorite blocks at the end of oh the, totally, and I I'm like, that's art, man. I completely get it. And I would walk down, I would go to an art gallery that was just all quilt blocks framed and have a look Mm -hmm. at the skill that goes into it. And especially the pattern, the seamless pattern matching. There's some people out there, like, and you're one of them, but the just the skill set to do it. And I'm, I am um, in awe of that. And then the secondary pattern, the EPP stuff. The secondary patterns are so cool. 
and I just the way some of the minds work where they they look at the fabric and go, I just need that little bit there. This rando mm. bit just here is going to look spectacular when there's eight of them in a circle. Yes. So, yes. yeah. Do you think that your fussy cut journey, like you've learnt all there is to know about fussy cutting or do you feel like you every day there's something else? I don't think I would ever say that I've learned everything there is to learn about anything. Yeah. I'm always learning constantly and, you know, learning and like developing new techniques and things like that. Not that like I'm the first person to ever do it or anything, but just like, you know, coming up with new and cool ways to do things. It's what I love about everything, yeah. <laughs> but quilting in particular. It's one of the things that I really love about teaching a class is I always come out mm-hmm. of it knowing something different um, because people yeah. just have their own ways of doing stuff. And um, mm-hmm. I like to pick and choose what I what yeah. I use and what I and how I work. But um, I guess is there a block? Say the unfortunate was to happen and you never made another quilt <laughs> block again. Was is there a block that you were like, this is what I want them to remember the geeky bobbin by? This is or do you think you're yet to create the epitome of geeky bobbinness in a block? Oh man, could I could I distill my essence into a single quilt block? I think that if I there's probably two that I can think of from the 2018 100 days 100 blocks and one of them is loose lips sink ships and I'm <laughs> uh, I'm ashamed that I don't know what block number it is uh, but I feel like it's 18. Yep. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's um we'll we'll share the picture. Yep. It's the one that I did the um plain boring tutorial that's on my blog. It's just like a photo-based tutorial. Um and it's Elizabeth. I managed to find like yards of Elizabeth for four dollars a yard. I don't oh, know wow. how I managed to find like yeah. Somebody had clearly overbought and I got like one or two colorways. So anyway, I had lots and I was like, I can use this for all kinds of fun things. So it, it it's her and I feel like it, it uses all four of the four fussy fundamentals. It's like the quintessential example where it's got the slice and insert, it's got mirroring, it's got isolation, it's it's yep. the whole shebang. So that one is one of them. And the um, time slice, which is the the Lyra, Lyra bird um, in the blue and red colorways, and it's got the half inch strips going in four directions. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's one of my favorite blocks out of that one, too. So if I was if I was to pick blocks, it would be those two blocks. Are, yeah. are those are those are my my inner soul in quilt form. But though there, I'm not dead yet. Yeah, so that's one thing. There will be there will be more. Yeah. Um, and I feel like there's a quilt that is going to be hanging at QuiltCon this year that um, I haven't really shared very broadly. Yeah. Um, I've shared it with my patrons on Patreon because uh, I feel like that's a safe place for me to talk about it. But it's a bit of a departure from what I tend to make. And so that's why I'm being very shy about it. Yeah, it'll but be perfect. That might be my my inner soul yeah. in quilt form. Also. Is it fussy cut or is it solids? It's solid. <gasps> it's solid scraps. Trainer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, this is what I mean, right? Like, oh, that th- nobody's gonna look at that and be like, "Bob made that." What? Um, but also, I mean, I have some high hopes for that quilt. So yeah, it's just very vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think that's the thing. All of us, the craft is so personal. It's like yes. it's you in fabric form, and and like you said, we spend hours meticulously going through and picking fabrics and doing things and and it's um literally blood sweat and tears sometimes (laughs) yeah I can be a bit loose with my rotary cutter but yeah it's that thing of you know it's you you put you out into the universe and you kind of go hey peeps this is I made this so yeah I'm very appreciative of you sharing um, your skill set and what you do and how you do it because the more people we can convert to fussy cutters. Yes. <laughs> no, I just want people to keep making quilts um, so that yeah. I can selfishly and, and look at them. Specifically, we want Taylor Swift to start making <laughs> quilts. Yeah. yeah. She's going to get married soon. 
maybe, possibly, if she chooses that. And I'm like, she needs a wedding quilt if she does. Or oh, she needs a yes. I'm not getting married quilt. She needs a quilt. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I imagine Taylor Swift as a quilter. I don't know where she'd find the time. Um, that woman is a powerhouse. <laughs> but, yes. Um, now, where was I? I'm off thinking about Taylor doing a big you know, like in concerts where they have the big backdrops and it just being a big, yes. massive <gasps> quilt. I'm like, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And it would be a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> a pixel quilt of her through all the eras. Like, oh. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, um, I am I'm sounding like I'm a massive Swifty and I'm, I appreciate her music and I, I love her business mind because I think she has uh, paved a way for women to do do big things, but uh, she's not a fussy cutter at this stage, but I will send her an invite. Yeah, if I get, imagine that, we have Taylor Swift on the podcast. She's here to talk about fussy cutting. That would be so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. My brain is, like, fully imagining her very confused face. (laughs) Well, she would be great, Quilter. She already has a really big love of cats, so... You know, Kelly, you know more about Taylor Swift than I do. I know. I, seriously, yeah. it makes it sound like I am a massive fan, but I just I re- am a prolific reader of garbage. So, um, ah, yeah, yeah, and podcasts. Prolific reader of garbage and listening to podcasts. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't read a lot of garbage. It's not like I'm reading gossip mags. It's just the news. Um, anyway, we digress. So that's everything. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I, I think we had like way too much fun. I suspect you'll be back in the future because there will be more stuff to oh, talk about. Yes. So everyone go sign up to the block of the month. I think I'm off to sign up for it as well because there's things that I can learn and I'm always about the learning. Check out Bobby's work. Follow her in Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever good fuzzy cutters are found. Um, (laughs) And we will catch up with you again soon, Bobby. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, fussy cutters, for (laughs) listening. My goodness, don't cut yourself while you're laughing at what we're saying. (laughs) Yeah, we don't want to be the fussy bleeders club. (laughs) Oh, ouch. Oh, no. Thanks for listening to the Fussy Cutters podcast. Enjoyed listening? Why not subscribe so you'll never miss an episode? Did you know the quickest way to the heart of any podcaster is to leave a review or recommend the podcast to a friend? It's true. It is. Until next week, get out there and fondle that fabric.